So the problem I'm having is that my van doesn't have an armrest. Luckily I own an upholstery shop, so I figured I'd make a video out of it. Because this car has a bench seat that can fold down, I can't fit in a normal armrest, so I had to make one from scratch. This is the normal position where I can fit in 3 people. When I fold it down, I have an armrest, which is held in place with velcro so I can still remove it easily when necessary. In this video I will be showing you my technique for making this armrest. What do we need? I use some scrap side laying around so it doesn't matter if you don't have the exact same materials. Most important is the sewing machine. I'm using an industrial grade triple transport sewing machine. You might as well use a normal household machine. If you are using a normal household machine make sure you use thinner and lighter fabric. Cause otherwise you will overload your sewing machine which may cause damage. Then we need a wooden plank. Some high density foam, the one I use is 4cm, about 1.5 inch. Optionally, you can use some 1cm foam, about half an inch. Some scrap fake leather, yarn, I use Cerafil automotive grade. Some contact glue, you can choose a spray can or brushable type. Optionally, you can use self adhesive velcro. You need a good scissor, a ruler and a tape measure. Some writing materials, if you need to make markings on your fabric it is necessary to use washable ink. I use these special silver pencils, they are cheap and easily obtainable. Optionally you yeah, want to have an electric knife and a staple gun. Once you make sure your wooden plank is the correct size you can start shaping the foam. I use an electric knife to ensure clean cuts. If you don't have one at your disposal, you might as well use a knife or even scissors for thinner foam. Next up I'm strengthening my foam structure by adding multiple layers. You don't have to use it, but it helps stiffening the structure and adding some thickness. Then I glued everything together, adding glue to your layers also helps stiffening up the structure. it's time to cut the fabric. For the top part you can lay a wooden plank on the fabric and trace the outline. It is really important to leave enough space for your seam allowance. This is normally 1 cm. Once you trace the outline you add 1 cm to the outside of this line. This is your seam allowance. That is the area between the fabric edge and the stitching line. It is necessary for a strong boning of the two fabric pieces. For the sides you will have to use a tape measure to measure the circumference. Because your fabric often isn't long enough to wrap the whole piece at once, you stitch small pieces together and decorate them with a French seam. I measured 140 cm in total. I'm going to make two separate pieces and stitch them together. But remember to add a seam allowance on both sides of the piece. So I will need two pieces of 70 cm plus 1 cm seam allowance on each side and some safety margin. 
In the end I cut two pieces of 75cm. To determine the height, you measure the height of the project and add 1cm seam allowance on top. On the bottom, I added a few more centimeters to make it easier for putting in the staples. You can use 3 to 5 centimeters on the bottom. Next up, I'm stitching the sides together. A little tip for straight stitching. You can mark your seam allowance on your sewing machine with some tape. This way you only have to hold your fabric against the line. This was the first fabric I stitched after I did a major overhaul on my sewing machine so it wasn't quite dialed in yet. Then I'm finishing off the stitch with a French seam. I used some black backing material so you won't see the foam picking through when the seam is under stress. This also gives a little strength to the seam. You fold over the seam allowance and stitch on top of it. I put my French seam on the front and back of my workpiece. You could also put them on the side. I measure the center of my top piece, that is where I line up my French seam and start sewing the first half. When I reach a corner I cut some relief cuts so the fabric lays nice and flat in the end. Then I flip my piece around and stitch the other half. This is to ensure my French seam lays exactly in the middle. To stitch the end together, I mark the center of my top piece. Then I lay my side pieces over the center point and mark them. I add 1 cm seam allowance, do this for both sides. Then I cut off the excess material. Next, I stitch the two ends together and top it off with a French seam. Finally, I stitch the loose pieces to the top part. The relief cuts I made earlier are not enough to give it a smooth edge, so I still have to make bigger pie cuts. You only have to do this in the corners. I have chosen to finish off my top piece with another French seam. It is the same principle as the previous one. Again I use some backing material. Then it is time to secure the cover to the wooden plate. Make sure your piece is perfectly centered. I use a staple gun. 
this is the fastest and easiest way. Next I make some pie cuts to get the corners flat and secure them with some more staples. Finally you can wipe off your markings with some interior cleaner. I also fitted some self-adhesive velcro to the underside so you can easily detach it when necessary. So this is the end result. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Thank you for watching.